Today we dedicate a museum built on hallowed ground. 13,000 Americans gave their lives so that they might save a nation. By doing, doing so, we commemorate the sacrifice of 800,000 Americans who served a cause greater than their self-interest and whose loyalty obliged them to suffer extraordinary deprivation and cruelty. Their story is the story of a struggle against dawning odds to choose their own way, to stay faithful to a shared cause, to remain human beings in a world where they were treated like animals. Their humanity, so ironic and gallant in its opposition to organized inhumanity, was their glory. Those who came home sought no greater celebration of their glory than to quietly walk again among the free. Those whose struggle ended in shallow, unmarked graves rely on the living conscience of the great nation to which they gave their lives to remember their humanity, to tell, to tell the tale of their glory. That is our purpose today, here where the horrors of Andersonville created its legend, to tell the tale of the glory of Andersonville and all the Andersonvilles in our history. It is the tale of man's glory, man made in the image of God, man starved, dirty, sick, injured, suffering, dying man, whose God-given dignity could not be destroyed by any human power, no matter how strong and malevolent. Walk the long road up the Bataan Peninsula to Cap O'Donnell, Camp O'Donnell, past the bodies of six to seven hundred Americans and thousands more Filipinos, dead from injuries, fatigue, sickness, and murder. And witness compassion and sacrifice and endurance. Witness the men who stopped to tend a dying comrade and took a bandit for their kindness. Stumble into the camp hellhole number one, starved, exhausted, ragged thousands, and witness compassion sacrifice, and endurance. Witness men raise a cement cross to honor their dead, whose numbers increased by more than a hundred a day. Stand with the frozen and starved in desolate North Korean camps, living on meager rations of cracked corn, and witness compassion, sacrifice, and endurance. Witness men resist their enemies' daily regimen of brainwashing by silently memorizing the ever-lengthening roll call of the dead so that families may one day know the fate of their loved ones. Witness these things and know they prevailed, the dead as well as the living. Know they prevailed because they had compassion when it mattered most. Know they prevailed because God gave them an immortal soul no cruelty, no evil, but take from them. Walk away from the horror and suffering and back to the land of the free. You will know to the end of your days what it means to be free. You will know to the end of your days the beauty and responsibilities of liberty. Carry back to your country the message of prisoners in Hanoi. One goes, we all go so that it may be the watchword of a nation that is too often divided by petty differences that should shame us amid so many blessings. Take from this place all that is good about man and leave hate and brutality behind in the ruins with the fallen timbers, rusting wire, and broken concrete of prisons that could only cage the souls of the captives. 